This is One on One. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from Newark, New Jersey, the North Ward Center. This is a series of interviews we're doing as part of a series called uh, Autism, A Different Way of Thinking. We're honored to be joined by Suzanne Buchanan, who is Executive Director of Autism New Jersey, which is? A nonprofit organization that serves the entire state. We have an 800 line, 800 for autism, where parents and professionals can call and get all sorts of information. We educate and inform the community. We try to shape public policy. And if you have any questions about autism, we encourage people to call us. Here's, here's what's interesting. As we were prepping for this series, Susan, here's the thing that kept hitting me. Yeah. What is a different way of thinking? How have we been thinking about it? And what mm -hmm. should we be thinking about autism? Well, I think you know, one of the advances in the last few years is that we're looking at autism not just as an educational disability that affects a child during the school day, but as a disability that needs behavioral treatment 24-7 during all waking what does that hours. Mean? Give me an example. Of behavioral treatment? Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, any socially meaningful goal, right? Like if you have a young child with autism who has very limited language or he's not playing with his brother or sister. So we're gonna go in and observe that child, see where the skill deficits are, identify areas that they can make little improvements and shape and reinforce those skills along the way. So it's an incredibly complex situation behind the scenes in terms mm -hmm. of how the treatment is designed, but for the child, they just experience it as fun. Let me try this one. New Jersey versus the rest of the nation when mm -hmm. it comes to A, mm -hmm. diagnosing mm -hmm. autism, mm -hmm. and B, helping those dealing with autism. Sure. Um, you know, I think the good news is that we're a leader in this country. Um, in terms of the prevalence rate, right here in Newark, we have Dr. Walter Zaharadny, who's one of the principal investigators for the CDC prevalence. The Centers here. for Disease Control. Yes. You're talking about the federal government's role in this? Yes, exactly. So New Jersey is often one of the 10 to 15 or so states that is included in their federal prevalence estimates. And New Jersey is either the highest or the second highest, depending mm -hmm. on the year you know, that the publication comes out. Number of out. cases. Exactly. And so right now, we're at one in 34. And so people constantly ask, well, is there something in the water? Is there something in the environment? And none of those hypotheses have been vetted out. None of them have been supported. Um, but what Dr. Zaharani thinks is happening, too, is that we have, as he says, a mature network of advocacy organizations and parents sharing information with other parents. And so I think with organizations like Autism New Jersey and our sister disability organizations, continuously putting autism at the forefront, making it a conversation, you know, as early as possible in the pediatrician's office at, at parent play groups, right? That we're getting, we're doing a better job identifying kids as early as possible. Let's talk about this whole question of urban, mm -hmm. suburban communities. Sure. Sure. How autism is diagnosed, A, but mm -hmm. also treated again. Because, by the way, we're having a forum, a panel discussion with, uh, I believe, 10 experts dealing with autism, all different perspectives. You happen to be one of those experts. And we're also going to be joined by the Commissioner of Health and the great state of New Jersey, Dr. Elnahal. Urban, suburban mm -hmm. um, disparity? Yes. So, Describe it. So the good news on the prevalence front is that we're doing a better and better job identifying kids from ethnic minorities. And in fact, this is the first year that New Jersey closed the gap, right? Where typically kids from ethnic minorities were underrepresented in those prevalence numbers, but we've caught up. So what does that mean, underrepresented? So does that on, mean that there are in fact more children from urban minority communities who are, have autism that are not, not diagnosed or something else? It, it used to mean that, right? What does so, it mean now? So now we have the same prevalence numbers of kids with autism that we would expect given the distribution of different ethnicities across the state. Whereas, so the hypothesis is that autism affects all socioeconomic, all ethnic groups at the same rate. But years ago, we weren't seeing as many kids of ethnic minorities as we would have expected, mm. right? And so with the most recent results, we saw that we actually caught up and we are doing a better job identifying, we think, all of the kids. Why does Unless, it matter? Why does oh, it matter to identify those children earlier on? And we sure. happen to be in Newark. It could be Patterson, Jersey City, Camden, sure. Philadelphia. We're seeing in lots of different sure. states, but in urban areas. Sure. What is the difference as to when it's, you diagnose a child with autism. It's huge, it's life changing, right? So the earlier we know, the earlier you get to a kid, the earlier you can assess their behavior and try to improve their behavior, the better prognosis they have. The more skills they'll have, the less challenging behavior they'll have because they'll have better ways of communicating and getting their needs met. Um, 
it can absolutely be life changing. They get into preschool sooner instead of just maybe, you know, kind of flailing through those years and going to school at five. And then the gap between them and a typically developing child is even broader. Um, so we just need to get to kids as early as possible. And we need to get parents connected to information, resources, mm -hmm. services, funding yeah, streams. Yeah, stay on that. Sure. Because in prepping for the show, the thing that kept coming up was that somehow there was also a disparity yeah. between how urban parents, mm -hmm. some urban parents, versus mm -hmm. wealthier mm -hmm. folks in suburban communities, sure. where, well, again, whether it's New sure. Jersey and or other states were yeah. seen, in terms of access to information, mm -hmm. knowing where to go to get help, mm -hmm. actually having services in their community. Mm -hmm. So diagnosing it is one thing. Mm -hmm. Getting help, isn't that the other part of the equation? Absolutely, absolutely. And and I will go more into the room, but I gotta tell you, even in the autism community, like in suburban areas, very well-educated, very well-resourced parents are still struggling. So imagine how much of a struggle it is for parents in urban What are they struggling with? Break, break that down, you deal with it every day. Sure, so years ago, I remember meeting um, a couple, they were, the father is a gastroenterologist and the mother is a nurse. They're in the medical profession. They go to their colleagues. They say, we think our son you know, is exhibiting the signs of autism. Where do we go for an evaluation? And this wasn't that long ago. Mm. And they kind of got thrown around for a few months until somebody told them about us. And we said, okay, these are the people in your area who are experts in diagnosing autism. These are the people you go to. If you want a second opinion, here you go. Here's how to try to negotiate with the wait list. You right? did that for them. Yes, Two and medical healthcare exactly. professionals. Exactly, and that's why I just so wanted to... So what about everyone else? I feel like everyone, all the entire autism community is underrepresented in some way. And then, of course, individuals with autism and their families in urban communities are even doubly underrepresented. So that's one mm. of the reasons that we're working with the state to try to get Medicaid to cover ABA treatment. And, and well, hold on. So. We've got a minute left, yeah. but, but go back to that. You're trying yeah. to get the state of New Jersey to do what? To cover treatment for autism for families who are on New Jersey Family Care. Be because now? There was federal guidance a few years ago, and New Jersey is making good on its promise to offer that. So Hold they're, on. they're working is on the details. Is there coverage or not? There is, there is currently some coverage. Enough? No. This is a public policy question. Yeah. Last part public awareness, yeah. degree of empathy, if you will, concern. Yeah. How much progress in the last five to 10 years have we made in terms of yeah. public awareness around autism, what families are dealing with, mm -hmm. those who have mm -hmm. autism are dealing with? Right. How much better are we or not? I think we're, it's one of those things, like any complex issue, you, we've made a lot of progress, but we still have a lot of room left to improve. Um, we hear stories probably on a weekly basis or so from families where there was a really good first responder or you know just a stranger in a supermarket when their son had a meltdown. Um, people are, as we like to say, we chose a theme for Autism Awareness Month. It's called Choose Kindness. Mm. You know, like In that first moment when you see something unusual, you're not sure why that person is acting that way, just take a deep breath. Choose kindness. Just think, okay, if you were in that person, you know, maybe that parent's shoes, what would you do? Can you offer to help or should you just step away? Um, there's no judgments needed. You know, everybody has their own challenges in life. Um, and if you can be part of the solution, all the better. But um, yeah, just to choose kindness. You're part of the solution every day, you and your colleagues. And uh, you honor us by joining your other colleagues in this forum, uh, dealing with thank autism, you. a different way mm -hmm. of thinking. And thank you so much, Suzanne. Thank you. Appreciate it. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Northward Center, the law firm of Gibbons PC, PSENG, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation the New Jersey Education Association, and by Berkeley College. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.